How does this make Harbaugh look? Uh, stupid. Uh, I mean, I, let me get this out of the way first, Charlie. Um, it's great that Jim Harbaugh cares about rules that nobody else cares about. But for the audience that doesn't understand what's really going on here, Jim Harbaugh was brought back to Michigan a number of years ago, paid $8 million a year, and the sole purpose was to beat Ohio State. That's the goal at the University of Michigan. Guess what? He hasn't done it. He really hasn't come all that close other than one year when he blew a game that may have cost uh, the Wolverines a shot at the national championship. And last year in Ann Arbor, a lot of people thought maybe this was the year. And Ryan Day in his first year after taking over for Urban Meyer just wiped the floors with Jim Harbaugh. And when you have the, the other guy talking about hanging 100 on you and that's your biggest rival, and that's one of the biggest rivalry games some people think the biggest in college football, it is a complete and total embarrassment. The fact that Jim Harbaugh even has a job these days is for another question, uh, another, do another day. But um, it, it, it's, uh, Jim Harbaugh just can't get out of his own way. Why, he wakes up in the morning and, and seemingly says, how am I going to call more attention to, the, to myself to the fact that I can't beat Ohio State? Yeah, I mean, I think that Jim Harbaugh, one of the things that he understands is that bringing attention to himself – it matters in recruiting. Like, college football is a lot about recruiting, and bringing attention to yourself helps with recruiting, and he's done a good job of that. He's done a good job of recruiting since he's been there, but the problem when you do a good job of recruiting is people expect you to win a lot of football games, and they've done a good job of winning some football games, but there's just this one, this other school that does just as good, probably better job recruiting, and then also has done a better job of in-game coaching because their talent differential is not such that he should be 0-5, or not such that he should be getting blown out, which has happened a few times. The talent differential is close enough that he should be able to have won a game or two in the five times that they've played. But I do appreciate the fact that he won't stop. Like that type of false kind of uh, arrogance and that bravado and that uh, confidence that you'll keep running into that brick wall, like that's kind of what it takes to eventually knock that brick wall down. You don't want him to shy away and then to be kind of a scared and, and be kind of a coward in that situation. He looks at Ryan Day in Ohio State and he looks at them as rivals and equals, even though the record, record wouldn't suggest that. He believes that, and I think that is a – a personality trait that you won't find in very many people except for crazy people. And sometimes crazy people do exceptional things. And it will be exceptional if they're able to beat them this year. But the last thing I'll say is he did put it under the guise of trying to protect the players from uh, the coronavirus. Like he said that the coach was violating the rules and those rules were put in place to kind of protect guys from passing the virus uh, to their coaches or from their coaches, which does put, protect Ohio State players and all to, also does potentially protect the rest of the Big Ten from uh, teams that might be violating these rules. So he found, because he can't pick on the fact that they haven't won any games, he found some way to get in there and take the high ground and take a shot at Ryan Day. But... He still lost that exchange because Ryan high Day ground. shot. Call that yeah. the high ground? I mean, he's, he's taking the high ground in that he's saying, like, I care more about the health of my players and your players than you do because you're putting them at risk. But Ryan right. Day still still won the day, pardon the word play, by dropping that, putting 100 on him because mm -hmm. that feels like a realistic possibility if you watched any of those games. And, and think about this. Uh, yeah, it, it, it is important to follow the rules. I would always subscribe to that. But it's not like Jim Harbaugh called out Ryan Day for, for offering a, a recruit $100,000 in cash. I mean, this is pretty minor stuff in the pantheon of NCAA rules violation. It, I mean, it, it's petty. But, but that's, what, that's who Jim Harbaugh is. And remember, Jim Harbaugh is old school. He wears the khakis. He still looks like uh, he, he's, he should be there 35 years ago when Bo Schembechler was the coach. He, his father was a coach. His brother is a coach. And, and that's the sad part, Nick. Jim Harbaugh, as famous as he is, is not even the best known coach in his family. His brother's the one that won the Super Bowl. And remember who he won it against? 
Jim Harbaugh. <laughs> it's Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, that, that's, that is uh, a sad indictment that, that you have to look at every year when you go to Thanksgiving. But at least he doesn't have to have Thanksgiving dinner with, with, uh, with Ryan Day because that guy just became a coach, and he's already owning you like that. Urban Meyer is one thing. Urban Meyer is a proven coach who's won big at multiple locations. But to have Ryan Day just step in, beat you uh, handedly, I, I might add, and then kind of clown you on a call in front of the rest of the coaches is a is a bad move. But I do think that I understand that the infraction was minor. But if he was handing out $100,000 to players, I don't know where you stand on this. I'd be more upset at Jim Harbaugh for snitching on that than I would be for him snitching on this minor infraction. <laughs> like, I feel like I can respect that at least. At least I understand that that is, uh, in my mind, closer to fair than it is uh, potentially putting players at risk. And I understand what you're saying, Paul. Like, it's a, a minor infraction. He, I doubt that he would have done this if this, if he saw a picture from Northwestern or he saw a picture from uh, Michigan State. Like he's looking to pick a fight with Ohio State, and I respect it because, like I said at the beginning, that's the mentality you have to have when you are accustomed to getting your ass beat on a yearly basis, which is what he's accustomed to. <laughs> that's the mentality you have to have that you're gonna go back out there and believe and fight and pick a fight with the biggest bully on the block, and maybe this time things will work out better for you. Okay, Dominic, we see how you roll. Uh, Paul, I have a question for you. How many more years, or we can say even, maybe not even years, do you give Harbaugh at Michigan? Man, I, I've, I've answered this question wrong so many times because every time it, it seems like it ought to be over, the Michigan fans accept it. And, and by the way, I heard on, a, on another show this morning uh, that Jalen Rose, who's a Michigan man, has gone ahead and predicted Jim Harbaugh to win next year. I mean, that, that may be the funniest thing I've heard. I know we're all looking for a good laugh these days. Thank you, Jalen, for making my day. Really? Um, but uh, Michigan does not want to fire him for a couple of reasons. He, he does go by the rules. That's obvious. Uh, he, he has not brought an embarrassment to the school other than that annual game with Ohio State. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.